think now is a wonderful opportunity once we raise that volume of our voices together, the government, the policymakers, and everyone, try to come up with an idea in which we will be able to sustain ourselves. I think the vision, the narrative, is something that evolves. It's something that will continue to evolve in this discussion series we're in. It's an inspiration to take up action. What would be an ideal post-COVID and climate-adapted Atlantic Canada? Using all your senses as if you were already in that world, you've envisioned different from the one you're living in today. How do you see it? No one is left behind a focus on communities and working together on local scaled initiatives. The Atlantic Canada is decolonized to some extent. I envision more people out in nature and bring in some appreciation for what she has to offer. Everybody continues to get outside and enjoy and appreciate nature because you can't really protect something if you don't appreciate it. The Indigenous Ilnu people have an, an equal say in what happens in Atlantic Canada, equal as in with the governments and leaders. Consult the Mi'kmaq people in the sense where we work together. Appreciation of what we have in our lives in all quadrants and a willingness to take care of it. Not just continuing to uh, seek more, 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 but rather really appreciate what we have uh, in our relationships, in our natural world, and in our uh, spiritual lives. I saw children in school, and I, I saw them only in school for the morning, and in the afternoon allowed to be outside playing, exploring, making friends, and exploring their surroundings. As there is a window, a perception now with COVID of just slowing down, uh, a little more heartfelt connection with people, that that continues. There's less general speed and busyness, and that creates more um, heart connection, more caring, more gentleness, more openness with others. Focus on uh self-reliant bioregions and uh, with that is an economy that is no longer focused on uh, competitiveness instead it is secure in that uh, it's based on a no growth economy that's accessible to all most likely with a guaranteed livable income one that we base on uh, fair trade so that uh, we uh, reduce or eliminate the exploitation of primary producers and is ecologically sound. I can't help but feel at times that uh, there is a sense of fear that uh, no one really wants to make any kind of a statement because it might be construed as would be not politically expedient, but I think there is a sense in which people are now really doing a lot of inner reflection. And I am confident in saying that maybe they are waiting for someone to take that bold step forward.